are many lies that people believe about minimalism. You can say untruths, half-truths, whatever you want to call them, but they are simply not true. And I'm going to tell you about the nine things that a lot of people generally believe and that hinders them from becoming minimalists. A lot of those reasons hindered me for many years. And here I am because I found out that they're not true and that minimalism actually is for everybody because it can be tailored to you as a person, as an individual, and it's not a cookie cutter thing, which I believe for many years. Minimalism is only for the rich. It's something that so many people believe. This definitely has to do something with the aesthetic of minimalism, how minimalism is presented a lot of times. It's more about the style than the lifestyle, if you know what I mean. Having perfect homes where you just have one chair and that chair has to be designed. We don't have that in our home. We don't have a perfect home. I thrift a lot of my clothing. Like everything I have on right now, like this shirt, these pants, they're all secondhand. And I think you can still live a minimalist lifestyle with not having to spend a lot of money. A lot of people have a misconception that when they become minimalist, they have like this mug and they think okay this mug i need to replace it for this really high quality expensive mug but i don't think that's what minimalism is it's keeping something that serves you well if you have a mug and it serves you well keep it when it breaks you can upgrade to another one and if you like a better one that lasts you longer but don't switch out things that you already have for other things just because you think you have to have them in order to belong to the tribe of the minimalists I don't think that's a healthy thing to do and I don't think anybody should do that. Yes, the ongoing issue with minimalism and children. Don't take away their toys, you're gonna take away their life. Don't get rid of everything they love, you're gonna mess them up. I got rid of probably 70% of my children's toys. In the beginning, I put all of their toys that I took out of the room that they didn't play with anymore in our attic to kind of find out whether they would miss them. And they didn't they didn't miss anything i even told my oldest daughter who's eight later okay so i took a ton of your toys to the thrift store and you know what her response was which ones she didn't even know because they had so much stuff and their room was messy all the time granted it is still messy i don't know how minimalist kids like keep their rooms clean because my children even if they have like two toys they will be on the floor <laughs> they are so much more into fantasy play now they still have their playmobile that they love to play with they make up little stories with their stuffed animals i don't think minimalism will mess up your kids i think what would mess up your kids if you force them to throw away or donate toys that they actually love and play with that is something that is not healthy there are definitely a lot of extreme minimalists online and there is nothing wrong with that if that's what floats your boat it's fine i think everybody should decide that for themselves but i think because of those people and as i said there is nothing wrong with it a lot of people think that minimalism has to be extreme i was one of those people i thought it meant living in this old bus and you have four people in your family so you have four plates four spoons four forks for knives you know you get the gist and i thought i'm I don't think that is something that I'd ever want to do. It's too much, it's too extreme. But minimalism doesn't have to be extreme. It's what you make it for yourself. I still consider myself a minimalist. I still own three mugs. I know a lot of minimalists probably was like, that is too much, but I really like my mugs. I mean, I used to own 10, now I own three. I think that's fine. I drink a lot of tea. My children smash mugs, and those are mugs that I will definitely not ever find anywhere else and can we buy because they're vintage a lot of people make minimalism a competition who can own less but i think that's a recipe for misery and it's kind of a showing thing because you want others to know that you only own two pairs of jeans you know what i mean i know there are also a lot of minimalists who only own one set of bed sheets and if that works for them that is fine it does not work for me why does it not work for me well one of my kids just threw up the other night in her bed and gosh was i glad that i had a second set of sheets you know don't think it has to be extreme don't think you have to go all the way to call yourself a minimalist i don't think it's true i think it is simplifying your life and just keeping the things that give you joy that serve you well the neutrals thing i feel like a lot 
lot of minimals have very neutral homes. They have all white walls, which um, I have all white walls, but that actually is gonna change sometime this year because I am not a fan of all white. Neutrals, I'm wearing neutrals right now, but I have things that are not completely neutral. I have like green jumpsuits and a green blouse and blue things and other colors for summer. I don't think it has to be all neutral. If that's not your thing, like don't do it. If you love matching crazy colors, do it. It doesn't matter. If you love art on the wall that is colored, just do it. As I said, it's about keeping the things you love and that serves you well. I'm gonna get something off that shelf really quick. This is not a neutral. This is a 1960s, quite rare-ish vase and we love it. It's something that we cherish and it's gonna stay in our house forever. I don't think that minimalism has to confine you to certain colors. It's just this aesthetic of minimalism that a lot of people had for many years in their homes and in their closets. It was just the aesthetic, you know, like the style, the art style, where it's just very basic. But that doesn't have to be you. That's not me. Don't change yourself. If you don't like neutrals, but you feel drawn to minimalism, make it colorful. If you love neutrals, and you feel drawn to minimalism, great, you fit right in with a lot of people. But just don't change yourself because you think you have to adapt to a certain color palette. Collections. A lot of people think they have to get rid of their collections when they become minimalist. You know, they collect stamps or books or pottery and feel like they have to just let it all go. I went through my vintage collection actually also before we moved to this home when I would not have considered myself a minimalist because I wanted to change my style. In the end, I just didn't really buy anything new, but I kept the things I love. I mean, I have a set of dishes behind me and some other glass things that I really love and something that I collect, I'm still looking for pieces. It gives me joy, I use it. For myself, I found that at least what I collect, which is ceramics, I want to either display them really nicely or use them. I don't want to have them tucked away in cabinets if I don't switch them out or just have them sitting somewhere. That I personally, for me, I don't like. Just keep the things that make you happy. If you want to own a thousand books, fine. But then if you only need like 20 items in your closet because that's not your thing, fine. You're still a minimalist because you keep what is essential to you. Food. I love food. I would consider myself a foodie for sure. I love my cookbooks. I got rid of some. Um, I decluttered some where I just realized I was cooking maybe two recipes out of them. So I took pictures of them, but then kept the rest because I love them. I love food. And I think a lot of people in minimalism, it's never a rule, I know, but they don't buy crazy ingredients because they're afraid they have to throw it away. But I love experimenting with food. I don't like cooking the same thing every single day. I think it's a lie that a lot of people believe that you have to do the basic dishes like Monday pasta, Tuesday burgers, Wednesday tacos. But that is something that I personally don't believe. That's something that I won't give up for the sake of being minimalist, forcing myself into a mold. That's the whole thing. Don't force yourself into molds. I mean, I have some basic dishes that I make, but Generally, I love trying out new things and I love experimenting in the kitchen and I love going through grocery stores and finding new things and ingredients. They just make me really happy. I'm not the person who only has eight dishes and then rotates them so we eat the same thing every two weeks and that's okay. People will notice that's what a lot of people think when it comes to clothing, when you declutter clothing especially. I have not officially done Project 333, where probably a lot of people who are watching this are familiar with it, but if you're not, it's where you only keep 33 items of clothing and accessories, with a few exceptions and shoes as well, for three months. Um, 33 doesn't sound a lot, and I never officially did Project 333, but I decluttered so much last winter that I kind of counted all the things I had and I'm not kidding you. Including my jewelry and everything came down to 33 items. I kid you not. It was not on purpose, but it was exactly 33. And I was like, that's interesting. So I actually sort of did Project 333 without really doing it officially. <laughs> so um, nobody noticed. Um, we go to church a lot. I do not count my church clothes because to me, th these are not everyday clothes. They're a separate category, like active wear. <laughs> like to me, they belong in the same category because my church dresses, I don't wear them during the week, but I also decluttered a lot of those. And so nobody notices. Some people even complimented me on things that I was like, I've worn that like 10 times. And they asked me, did you get this new? I'm like, no, not really, but thank you. <laughs> Thank you for thinking that I did. Also with my everyday things, I 
I have things now that I really, really like. I whittled down my wardrobe to um, the things I love and I love to wear and I know that look good and the jewelry I like. And I'm really happy with that because I know now every day when I put something on, I feel good. I mean, not even my husband says you wear the same thing all the time. I don't think he notices either. I don't think most people do. What is the first thing that comes to your mind when you think about minimalism? Is it a home with white walls, black leather chair or beige sofa, an all beige or black wardrobe? That used to be the thing that came to my mind because that's what I thought what minimalism was. Owning nothing and what you own should definitely be neutrals. But that is the minimalist home style, the clothing style. It's not the lifestyle, it's not what it's about. It's about keeping what you love, what is essential to you and not about the aesthetics. A lot of people make it about aesthetics and there are people that are drawn to that, but they're not minimalist. They may have a house that looks very minimalist, but then they stuff everything in the closets that are all white and look beautiful and designer, but they're not minimalists. They just have the aesthetic. And I think that's a big thing that people confuse, like the minimalism aesthetic and the lifestyle, which are two very different things. You can have a minimalist looking home but it's not minimalist because you still own like a hundred pairs of shoes, but they are put in this absolutely stunning shoe closet that's like inserted into the wall and you can't see. Then you can also be a minimalist and your home doesn't really look like a typical minimalist home. I would say that mine doesn't. I have my vintage lamps hanging on the ceilings. I have like my vases and my, my other stuff. And I don't think that people would come in here and be like, this smells like minimalist in here. If you look into my cupboards, also the ones behind me, they're not filled with tons of stuff anymore. That's a big misconception that people have and a big lie that people believe that it's about the aesthetic. But minimalism is about the lifestyle if you want to become an actual minimalist. Decluttering is wasteful. I personally never had that thought, but I know a lot of people do because they say, well, I declutter it. And then I either throw it away or it goes to the thrift store where there is a high chance that it's going to end up in a landfill, which is true. Not everything you take to the thrift store is going to be sold, obviously. But what happens if you keep it in your home? Well, you'll keep it in your home forever until you are no more. And then what happens to that thing? Do you think your whole family is going to keep all of your things forever? I don't think so. They're probably going to get rid of 95% of all the stuff and you can obviously either sell it but then even if you sell things you don't know if that person's gonna keep it forever probably at some point it's gonna end up in a landfill anyways so why should you hold on to things that you don't want anymore that don't serve you anymore that clutter your home just because you think it's gonna end up in a landfill well if it's not gonna end up in a landfill now it's gonna end up in a landfill in maybe a decade or two or three four five it's not gonna be around forever at some point it's gonna break at some point it's going to be thrown away or donated if not by you then by somebody else there is no use to holding on to those things if they don't serve you anymore that's why i personally don't think decluttering is wasteful that's why i don't think it has a different ecological footprint than other things or impact the most important thing is that we consume mindfully and really think about things we bring into our home once we declutter that we just don't fill it up again. Once you declutter and you are mindful of your purchases, I think that is what is gonna make the biggest impact. Because then at some point, if people have to get rid of your stuff, they're not gonna be overwhelmed. They don't have to donate a ton because you never completely filled your house up with useless stuff that you don't need. If you got value out of this video, make sure to subscribe and leave me a comment down below letting me know if there are any other lies about minimalism that you found out not to be true but that a lot of other people believe. I would love to know. I'll see you in my next video. Have a great day. Bye!